What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Miniconda, which is a Python virtual environment manager, and you also have access to the Conda package manager as well. Um, basically, if you're into data science or anything like that, you probably know this is basically the standard for most data scientists. You'll probably see most of them using Anaconda, um, but I would opt for Miniconda since it's a lighter weight version of Anaconda. You'll have basic, you will have access to all the same features, um, but you won't get like, how, who knows how many gigs of extra modules that you really will not be using at all. Um, and then like a whole kind of somewhat useless user interface as well. Like you really don't need that. So if you want to opt for a lighter weight version of this package manager and virtual environment manager at least, um, I, would, I would go with Miniconda. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to install Miniconda. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Conda. Uh, and that'll apply for both Miniconda and Anaconda in the next video. So this will be a relatively short video. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this um, to this blog post so you can kind of follow along. There's just going to be a few commands that you'll essentially copy and paste to install this. And uh, then that should be it. So if you're on Linux, you can copy and paste this. If you're on Mac, you can copy and paste this. If you're on Windows, you can probably just go to miniconda.com and they'll just give you a way to install it. So what we're going to do is, one second, I might not have copied that. All right. Just run that and what that's going to do is it's going to pull down a script here and you can see it's going to pull down the latest version of uh, Miniconda and it's going to pull down a script that we can run to actually install Miniconda. So what we're going to do is copy this next command over here. Okay, and we're just going to run this shell script with a few options and we're going to be keeping all of our data for Miniconda in a directory called dot Miniconda. Um, a lot of people you'll see in their home directory they'll have like um, you know all their normal stuff they'll have like all this stuff here and then they'll have anaconda 3 they'll have or miniconda 3 or something like that and I think it just kinda looks junky and I don't really need to see that when I'm just listing out my home directory so I keep it in dot miniconda just to kinda keep it out of the way since I've never really I, I don't interact with that directory that often alright so let's run this um, I probably still nope Let's recopy it. Okay. All right, and this shouldn't take very long. It should only probably take like about 10 seconds to really finish. And after this, you'll have access to the Conda Package Manager and the Virtual Environment Manager. So what we'll do is we'll just type Conda. You can see that we get all of the arguments you can pass it here, like um, all the stuff I'll be going over in the next video, like install and like all this other stuff. Um, the other thing you'll see is just a brief description. So this is how you know that you'll actually have the Conda binary available. So the next thing we're going to do is really fast. Let's just go take a look at this directory. So we're going to CD into dot mini Conda. Actually, before we do that, we should probably just remove this script since you don't need it anymore. So let me clean this up here. So just do um, RM and you can see it listed out in my home directory here. RM mini Conda dot SH and get rid of that because we don't need that script anymore. So we're going to CD into Miniconda. Okay. And you'll see like, okay, if I had any environments, they would be in here. Um, there's other stuff, uh, you know, like you can kind of explore this on your own time, but you know, just kind of get familiar with some of this stuff. It may be helpful in the future. Um, the really interesting directory is your binaries directory here, which is where a lot of the binaries will go. And uh, you can see Conda's here, Conda Env is here, Idle 3.8. You can do, um, for instance, where is Conda? And you can see Conda is in dot mini Conda bin, which is where we are right now. You can also do something like where is, um, or how about which, which uh, pip? And you can see that we're using the, the pip that's in dot mini Conda. So these are kind of useful commands to check whether or not you're using your virtual environment manager or not. So also pip3. You can also, I think it'll come with idle 3.8 here if you're interested in that. Probably you don't really need it. Um, and yeah, also if we do something like Python, you can see that it's using Anaconda, right, on Linux. So it kind of says that and lists it out. We're using 3.8.5. That's the version that they gave us and you can just do exit like that to get out. All right, so that's just kind of just a brief um, exploration of the dot mini conda binaries that come with it. Uh, the next thing that we'll do 
is we're gonna, I'm just gonna explain this command here called conda config, just because, um, well, like I'll show you, if I do which Python, we're using now the Python that comes with Miniconda. So that's like the, whenever Python's called from something on your system, it's gonna call the one in Miniconda. Now I've had clashes with things like NPM, I think before, or Node, I can't remember which, I think it was NPM, but that may clash. You may find that like things in other programs complain when it's pointed to the Python that's in Miniconda. So if you wanna get rid of that, what you can do is just run this command here, conda config set, and then auto activate base, and then you can set it to false. Now what that'll do is, I'll show you, I'm gonna run that command, and you can see, before when I did which Python, I was pointing to the one in Miniconda. Now if I start up another terminal here, and if I do which Python, it's gonna to point to my system level Python again. So also if I run Python, you can see, all right, it's just on Linux. It's a different version of Python. It's 3.9.5. It's the contemporary one I have here. And so it just proves that it's a different Python. So watch out for that. It's kind of a, it's something that may not be entirely obvious. Now, the next thing we'll do, and, and again, if you want to change this at any time in your home directory, you'll now have a .conda RC. You can open that up and you can just change this to true if you actually do want to use that as your Python. And then we'll open up this again here. And we'll do which uh, Python, whoops, uh, let's skip this one. And now we're using the dot mini conda Python again. So something to keep in mind. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do, um, if you actually wanna use conda, like if you wanna be able to conda, create, flag in, and then like a name of a virtual environment, I don't know, like tensor, tensor, flow and then say like Python and I'm gonna go over this more in the next video equals 3.9 and actually create it and have this work um, then what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to initialize conda for your shell now I'm running Z shell and you can find out what your shell is right now just by doing um, echo and then dollar sign all caps shell this will tell you uh, which shell you're running. So you probably already know if you're running like, well, Max kind of sneakily during, I think, Big Sur or Catalina, I can't, I can't remember which, they are now on Z shell uh, by default. A lot of systems are on Bash by default. And then if you're on Fish, you probably know that you're on Fish, right? And I think PowerShell is for Windows. These other ones I'm not really familiar with. So just run echo shell and you'll know which shell you're using. And then after that, you just want to do conda, init, and then just pass in your shell, like Z shell for Z shell, bash for bash, fish for fish, right? And so I'm on Z shell, so I'm going to do Z shell. Now, I didn't have any changes here. I think it's because, yeah, no change here, but this is the interesting one, right? So what you need to do is you can open up your Z shell RC, and then somewhere appended at the bottom, you should see this content right here. Um, it looks very weird and uh, lots of shell script, but just don't really worry about it. They have some stuff where it says like contents within this block are managed by conda in it. So basically just don't touch it and everything should just work. Um, what I recommend doing is just opening up another terminal after this to make sure that things work. Um, everything should be fine after that. And that should be pretty much it for installing and using mini conda. So in the next video, like I said, I'll be showing you how to actually use Conda um, because there's probably a few more features that are important and a few more gotchas rather than just creating virtual environments and uh, installing packages, right? All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you uh, where you can find my content and how you can support the channel. So again, you can find this blog. There will be a link in the description. Um, this, this is kind of the links to all of my stuff in the description. So you can check me out on all my social media here. Um, you can check me out over on my GitHub. If you want to see some of the projects I'm working on, you can follow me over on Twitter. If you want to just kind of get notified when I create content, uh, you can also follow me over on Odyssey and I'd rather you follow me on Odyssey because it's kind of an up and coming competitor to YouTube. So, um, yeah, check me out over there. Sometimes I stream on Twitch, but not very often. Um, and also, if you want to support the channel, you can support me over on Patreon. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.